Well, hello, Gateway Baptist Church. Uh, you have prayed, and God has answered. Uh, we are now able to reopen the church property uh, on this coming Sunday morning at 9 a.m., and that is May 31st. And thank you for praying all that any of us have wanted this entire time is for God's perfect will to be done about his timing for when he wants us to be able to physically come back together. And he has given his answer. Uh, we are now in what is being called by the health authorities by the governing officials in Nevada, phase number two. And so I want to go through some important information with you that you need to know prior to uh, arriving this Lord's Day, this coming Sunday, at the 9 a.m. morning service. The first thing that uh, we need to know is that during phase two, there will be three services uh, during the week. The first service is, begins this Sunday morning from nine o'clock until 10 o'clock a.m. The second Sunday service will be at Sunday 6 p.m until 7 p.m. And then, of course, Wednesday night Bible study prayer meeting from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. The sanctuary seating uh, is, uh, is all designed, arranged to facilitate uh, the protocol of the governing officials, the CDC, and so you need to be aware that um, everything is set up so that Gateway Baptist Church will be in compliance of the six-foot social distancing mandate. That is a rule uh, that is uh, not optional, and I'll explain why momentarily. During phase two, uh, there, there are no child ministries and there is no church nursery. However, uh, parents uh, that need to uh, use the nursery space or uh, one of the adjoining adjacent rooms uh, by the sanctuary are welcome and even encouraged uh, to do so uh, when a child has become unsettled or is crying and uh, that, that is because we are still recording all of the gospel preaching services and of course uh, for any um, attending in the sanctuary uh, who are uh, who have never uh, been saved yet, it's just critical that uh, the Bible preaching services uh, be as calm and quiet so as not to distract or to take any one's attention away from the Word of God uh, or from the work that the Holy Spirit is doing in their heart during uh, the gospel preaching. So uh, the nursery... Uh, may be accessed by parents with a toddler or baby who is crying and uh, who has become unsettled uh, and uh, uh, can uh, become a, a space where the child can be calmed or settled down. And, uh, and so please uh, uh, make a note of that. Um, now, again, uh, we, we must uh, follow the uh, CDC six-foot social distancing ruling at all times while on the church property 
And that is in, in large part because of the liability issues uh, should anyone become infected with the COVID-19 virus while attending uh, the services here at Gateway Baptist Church. Uh, if uh, contact tracing is done and it is uh, determined by health officials that uh, the infection occurred uh, while uh, the infected person was attending uh, the services at Gateway Baptist Church, uh, then it becomes uh, uh, just a huge issue if anyone, while on the church property, uh, did not comply with uh, the six-foot social distancing rulings. And so... Uh, uh, you you need to uh, you need to uh, understand that well in advance uh, of attending this coming Sunday morning service or any of the services uh, while we are still in the phase two um, and then uh, those who are sick with fever or cough. Uh, or just uh, not well, um, a cold, uh, flu um, symptoms uh, must not attend until they are able to, to get well and uh, to regain their health. And th that is for obvious reasons. Uh, you know, we, we want to avoid uh, spreading any, um, any viruses, uh, that would uh, then cause others to uh, become sick and uh, and so uh, be mindful of that to follow that protocol. Uh, the, uh, the CDC is encouraging uh, the elderly uh, because they have determined uh, that those who are 65 years and older uh, fall into the high risk of infection category, uh, there, they have determined there is a very real and high risk statistically of people in, in that age group uh, contracting the COVID-19 virus. And so what they're asking um, church members in that age group to do during phase two is to uh, continue uh, to receive the preaching uh, in their homes uh, by way of the uh, video, uh, the YouTube, uh, or Facebook, or the uh, church website where those sermons are uh, posted as well. And uh, so, uh, and then um, members uh, should and are encouraged by the CDC and uh, the state governing officials uh, to wear a face covering during all services uh, while here uh, on the church property. And uh, uh, again, uh, that is because of the huge liability issues associated uh, you know, for the church uh, should anyone become uh, sick with the COVID-19 virus uh, while uh, attending any of the uh, Bible services uh, here at the church property. So that is what uh, the, uh, you know, the governing officials are uh, in strongly encouraging that uh, everyone do while uh, at the church property. Uh, I would encourage members to bring a small container of hand sanitizer with you when you attend, and that can be available to use as you determine you need to do so. And so please, uh, would, you, uh, would you please uh, make sure that you have that small container of uh, hand sanitizer with you each time 
uh, you attend the uh, church services and while you're on the church property. Um, <clears throat> and pre and post service fellowship, um, I recommend that be accomplished outside um, and uh, that is because uh, this uh, virus um, is, is, has less, less contagion uh, in open areas uh, than uh, it does in closed, confined spaces uh, such as the church sanctuary. So, uh, you know, fellowship uh, is encouraged, it's needed, it's welcomed, it's been missed, uh, but again, must uh, be accomplished uh, by practicing that six foot distance from uh, others who are not family members uh, and um, should be done outside either before entering the uh, confined indoor spaces or uh, fellowship should be done after the preaching service concludes uh, and you have exited the building, uh, then by all means, uh, fellowship uh, your hearts away. And, uh, and then, uh, again, uh, if the attendance uh, at any of the church services reaches a number that is above 50, uh, then we must, uh, by law, uh, we must uh, split up uh, the attendees into two groups uh, and um, we will utilize the fellowship hall um, as well as the sanctuary and we'll do that simultaneously and uh, there will be a Bible message in the sanctuary, there will be a Bible message in the fellowship hall, and uh, in this way we can accommodate groups of 50 uh, or more and remain in compliance with uh, the uh, rules uh, that are uh, mandated during this phase two uh, time that we're in. And uh, so uh, these are just some uh, important reminders that uh, I want you to become familiar with. And uh, you can listen to the video as many times as, uh, as you need uh, to do so. Uh, but again, because of the enormous liability issues uh, that it would um, invite upon the church, if we break the rules, uh, I must insist that we honor God, and the way we can honor him is by uh, following the phase two uh, rulings by our governing officials, uh, and, uh, and then uh, in so doing, uh, safeguard the health and the well-being of each other uh, as church members and any guests that God may be pleased uh, to bring to the services. Uh, I, I also want to say that uh, during phase three, uh, I do not have a date. We've not been given a firm date for uh, the beginning of phase three, uh, but uh, it's my plan uh, to open up child ministry uh, services uh, during phase three, as well as uh, uh, the church nursery uh, by providing a nursery worker. Uh, but all of that will begin in phase three. And uh, we will also uh, include uh, the additional uh, uh, Bible service or the uh, regular Sunday school hour 
uh, when phase three begins. Uh, so for now, we'll have Sunday morning from 9 to 10 a.m., Sunday evening from 6 to 7 p.m., Wednesday evening from 7 until 8 p.m. I hope to see you uh, on Welcome Back Sunday this coming Lord's Day, uh, beginning at 9 a.m. God bless you all.